Having discussed the uh, domain restrictions of single picked and uh, task allocation domains, now we are going to discuss the, the third domain restriction which is mechanism design with transfers. So for the rest of the course we are going to discuss only uh, this domain which is uh, presumably much more interesting and uh, it has lots of applications in different domains. In this context we are going to denote the social choice function with the capital of F. The, the reason uh, why we have migrated from a lowercase f is because we are going to use that lowercase f for some other uh, function here. So it doesn't matter, so it's just a mapping from this type profile to the set of outcomes. And in, the, uh, in this uh, context of mechanism design with transfers, the outcome, uh, let's say x, which lives in this uh, set script of x, it has two components. The first component is an allocation. And the second component is a payment vector, so which gives each of these individuals some amount of payments or transfer, as we as we will say. And we'll see how these two things are related, uh, the the transfers and the allocations, how they are related. Before that, we'll have to define a few few other things. So, what are the typical examples of allocation? So, let's say. Um, uh, the city planner is trying to take a public decision of building a bridge or park or a museum. So the allocation space in this case will be as a collection of all such uh, alternatives. If you are talking about uh, let's say a divisible good, suppose you are uh, the government is trying to share the spectrum uh, for 4G, then uh, the allocation would look something like this. It has a ve it, it is a vector where each of these AIs are some share of the total resource. So some, some over AIs are, uh, is always going to be 1, but AI uh, are living between 0 and 1. That is the share of the spectrum. Or if you are thinking about an uh, indivisible object that is being allocated among these players, then this allocation vector will be a very similar thing. Uh, the only difference is that now these AIs can take values only 0 or 1, and the sum of this, all these AIs can be at most one, which means that exactly one individual is going to get that object or nobody gets that object. The fourth and the last example that I'll give is about partition of indivisible objects. So suppose there, there is a set of objects, uh, some inheritance of, uh, of a property and uh, uh, the, the set of uh, uh, allocations in that case will be a partition of all those uh, of uh, all those objects such that this is uh, this ais individual ais are uh, subsets of s and each of this uh, ai and aj are uh, they're disjoint so yeah so it is not necessary that uh, uh, this a should cover all the whole of s so that way it is not really a partition uh, it is just just an allocation, uh, disjoint allocation of these objects. Now, in the context of uh, uh, mechanism design, we always talked about the type. So it it's again uh, a private information of player i. So we are going to uh, define a function called the valuation function, which depends on the allocation that that has been decided, uh, and also the type, uh, the private information of player i. And this function takes this to as input and uh, gives an, a real number as the valuation uh, of that uh, player. So for instance, for player i, the valuation function is mapping the, the allocation that has been uh, commonly decided uh, along with its type uh, and it is mapping it to the set of real numbers. So because it is depending on only the type of this player, this is uh, called the independent private values and that is what we are going to discuss in this course. Now uh, how can we relate uh, to this uh, valuation? Um, so let's look at the, the first example that is uh, a public good. Uh, so let's say the, the allocation space is uh, consisting of only two uh, possibilities, either building a bridge or building a park. So the allocation can take either of these two values. Now let's say player i has a type of environment saver. So it cares for the environment. In that case, if uh, the, the final outcome is to build a bridge, then they, uh, the, this player might not like it. Uh, so vi of b 
uh, given that its uh, type is theta i environment it will prefer that less than the part because part will have a will help the environment better therefore the valuation for player i uh, will be larger in that outcome so in some sense you can uh, relate to this valuation as the satisfaction or the happiness that player i gets but if you change this uh, this type for player i from uh, from environment server to let's say business friendly uh, so in that context in that type uh, maybe building a bridge is a better choice than uh, building a park. So that is the that is the interpretation of, uh, of valuation. So of course this uh, the interpretation might change depending on which context you are looking at. But uh, the abstract definition always takes an allocation and the type of the player and maps it to a real number. The real number it itself uh, says that uh, how much they value each of these uh, alternatives under a certain type. Let us now turn our attention to the payments. So the payments in this case is denoted by pi of i, uh, which are all real numbers for every individuals. So we will denote by this lower bar uh, in several places uh, to denote the, uh, the vector of all these uh, individual payments. Now the, uh, here is the uh, most important part. We are going to uh, assume a specific structure for the utility. In general mechanism design with transfers can have any form but the form that we are going to discuss is uh, what is known as a quasi-linear payoff. So what happens in this quasi-linear payoff when a player has a type theta i and the outcome uh, is uh, given by this allocation and this payment vector then the utility is uh, given by the following expression so uh, as before we are writing this as the x so this is the, the the consolidated outcome that has been chosen and theta is the type of player i now uh, because this outcome has two components one is the allocation component and the payment component they uh, uh, manifest themselves in the uh, expression of the utility in two, uh, two different ways so allocation shows up in the valuation part uh, which is the value that we have already discussed and the type determines what valuation uh, this player is going to get and the the payment part uh, just comes as a linear factor so uh, you can think of this as uh, this is the amount of payment that you are asked to make and this is the valuation that you get for this particular outcome building a bridge or building a park and uh, the the difference is essentially the net payoff that you are going to get and because of this linear partly linear so you can see that uh, this is uh, this expression of utility is uh, is linear in the the payment term but it might be non-linear in the allocation term so therefore it is called the quasi-linear payoff so this is the utility that we are going to assume and uh, we'll see that there are uh, quite a few interesting results uh, when we assume this. Let us conclude this uh, discussion in this module uh, by discussing what is the domain restriction. So why is this a, uh, this a domain restriction? So for that let us consider two different uh, uh, outcomes. Let's say this is x1 which is the allocation and this payment vector is given by this pi uh, and uh, another uh, uh, outcome which is uh, denoted by x2 let's say uh, wh where the allocation remains the same but the payment vector changes. Now let us also uh, assume uh, that uh, pi i prime that is the payment for player i in this prime is actually smaller than the uh, the payment in in the original pi vector. Now uh, in the unrestricted domain what we have assumed that every player in particular even for player i uh, x1 can can come above x2 or x2 can come above x1 I mean both are uh, admissible things but if you now think about this uh, uh, this quasi linear payoff you can see that uh, the uh, the utility is given by a very uh, uh, specific function which is the valuation minus the payment and because the allocation is the same uh, and the valuation is all uh, only uh, determined by the allocation and the type which is not changing here uh, we are assuming that the type is fixed in both these uh, two cases um, in that context the valuation is going to be uh, going to remain same uh, 
uh, in both these uh, outcomes x1 and x2 what is changing is the payment and because the payment is smaller in pi i prime uh, this is always going to be more preferred by this individual so uh, uh, that is a domain restriction because now in this quasi linear domain there cannot be any situation where uh, x1 is going to be more preferred than x2 because in x1 uh, the the, uh, the payment is pi which is more so player 1 will always like to have a lower payment uh, than a higher payment and that uh, brings uh, brings a kind of a domain restriction uh, in the context of uh, in this context of uh, uh, mechanism design with transfers and we'll see that this simple uh, restriction uh, will open up uh, a lot of opportunity for uh, certain social choice functions that satisfy some inter interesting properties including truthfulness.